time for the daily Marvel Snap video. Now, uh, we're going to get a new featured location, and this happens every Tuesday, and it has a 40% chance of showing up more, and it runs for two days. Now, there's a little bit of question on what of the four of these new locations is going to show up tonight. We're going to be operating on the premise that tonight will be the sacred timeline only because it was the first one shown in the video. Also in the data mines, there is a new offer that looks similar to last month's pretty good deal, the one that's Jubilee. And then I'm also gonna go over my initial thoughts about MODOK. I've got three decks that I've tested out and I wanna give my thoughts on whether or not MODOK is worth it or not. So let's get into this uh, sacred timeline right here. The sacred timeline, first to fill this gets a copy of their opening hand. So you get three cards at the beginning and then you draw one, but so it's gonna be three cards, right? Uh, and this feels like a, a bad or a different version of the raft, which we've all played. First to fill, this breaks out a six cost card. It costs zero. So I feel like there's a couple types of cards that will work well with this. Uh, the first card that I think will work well is gonna be Devil Dino because having more cards in your hand is, is gonna be a good thing. So it's kind of like a Moon Girl effect in some ways or uh, any kind of card drawing or adding cards to your hand is gonna be good for cards like Devil Dino. As far as filling up the location, I think that cards like Brood or Mr. Sinister can fill up the location very quickly. The other thing too is that, and if you've played Raph, you know this, you don't just wanna stuff like and clog it up and then you clog it up and, and then you lose the location because you put like one drops. So I think that uh, Broodling is a very good card uh, with Silver Surfer, of course, and because the Silver Surfer buffs them. And we're gonna talk about the Silver Surfer and, and uh, Zabu potential nerfs. A little, little bit lukewarm about this card right here. When a card enters your hand from anywhere, except for your deck, get plus one power. So the collector will get three power. I'm, I have mixed feelings about that. I think Quinjet will be a good choice. Ongoing cards that didn't start in your deck cost one less. Cards that uh, fill up the board very quickly would be like Thanos with all of the Infinity Stones. And uh, we've got a couple of builds here with Thanos that I think are gonna be very good. And so let's get into the first four decks uh, that I'm going to try when this location goes live. The first one that I'm going to try is a build right here that takes advantage of Devil Dinosaur and Quinjet and Thanos. And so this is a build that is going to fill the board and then having more cards in your hand is gonna be to the advantage. Thanos, of course, gives the six Infinity Stones, and with Quinjet on the board, they cost zero. So it should be very easy to fill up that location. Lockjaw can also uh, cycle in bigger cards. This is actually a ton of fun to play. And then you've got Spectrum and Blue Marvel to boost that location. So if you if you fill it up early, uh, then you can still boost the location and get push extra power there, even though you've already locked in the force base. This is probably gonna be the top deck that I'm gonna try first. Another deck that I'm gonna try right away is going to be a Patriot deck. Patriot has a lot of low cost cards that can get into that location and clog it very quickly. Uh, Mr. Sinister is an excellent choice too, because he fills up two locations. And then I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if you, you had Patriot in your opening hand, you fill up this location and now you have multiple copies of Patriot. This is gonna be amazing. Now, the next two decks are going to have uh, Silver Surfer or Zabu. So there are tentatively, for some time this week, I actually thought it would already happen, but there was a Twitter post from last week said that they were going to have some sort of change to Surfer and Zabu. And then we got a data mine leak, which suggests that Zabu now is going to be a two drop, two power, and only reduces the cost above one on four drops. And Silver Surfer is now going to be a three drop with two power and only going to boost other three cost cards by two. And this doesn't necessarily apply to that particular situation. This was, I think, more uh, geared towards 
and, and this is controversial. I don't think everybody's happy about this, by the way. I, I think people are pretty upset. Uh, but the, the idea here is that Ben Brode was talking about collector tokens and nerfing. And, and so I just wanted to read this because this gives insight to their policy and their view on nerfs. We want to be fairly aggressive with balance changes, which means we are often nerfing the best cards. If we gave refunds, that means the other cards folks are buying up end up just being free. They get the card and the 6K back. So this is talking about collector tokens, right? This kind of inflation will result in the currency being somewhat useless. We also want to, our designers to just nerf cards when it's the right thing to do and not have to worry about this could do to the in-game economy. Finally, let's see, I get out of the way. When we nerf cards, we aren't trying to make them unplayable. They kind of did that to leader, but I think they really wanted to fundamentally change the way that leader plays. So I agree with this sense, except for maybe with the case of leader, because I do think this is true. When we nerf cards, we aren't trying to make them unplayable. Just bring them into a fair position. They should still be useful and you should still have the card. So uh, this is the way it is. This is their philosophy towards cards that are strong. And so they are going to make changes to Surfer and Zabu. And of course, like I said, uh, it's somewhat controversial. Some people are okay with this. Other people aren't. Then let's get into the, the Surfer build. Surfer, I think, is just going to be amazing. This is probably going to be one of the strongest decks when this location is playing. And also, I got to say that these decks that I'm showcasing here that I'm going to be trying should also work very well when the location doesn't appear. I think that is very important on featured locations, not just to build a deck around the featured location, but to have a deck that works when the location is not there, but it works better than perhaps what your opponent is doing when it does show up. And, and just the combo of Brood and Silver Surfer is going to be bonkers good. And then the last one is a Zabu build with Quinjet and Devil Dinosaur. So this has a lot of the elements that I was talking about of being good for this feature location. And I do think that this is going to be uh, over the top. Uh, there's going to be a new package. And this package does not have a price on it. But it is going to be for Mystique. And this is going to be similar from what it looks like to me. Uh, like the Jubilee bundle that we had last month, which I did purchase. Uh, if I remember correctly, the Jubilee bundle last month had not only a variant and some boosters and avatar, uh, but it had 500 gold and 500 credits and it was $5. So this is going to be a similar package in that it's going to cost money, dollars. So it's not gonna be purchasable with gold, uh, but it's gonna have 1500 credits and 1500 gold. And so I do not know what the pricing on this one's gonna be. I think it's gonna be 10 or $15, we'll have to see. And whether or not I like the offer is largely going to depend on the price of this. Now, I just wanted to go over some of the testing that I've done on Modoc so far. And if you want me to make a video about it, put it in the comment section. I do wanna say that I think that Modoc, to me, feels like a fun card. I'm not sure if it's a card that's, it's certainly not as strong as Zabu and Surfer. It's not even close. In fact, I think right now, a lot of the Modoc builds feel very clunky and awkward. Uh, the play style is strange and I just don't feel like they're gonna be like top tier. This could all change if we get another card that complements the discard archetype. Uh, I also think that once the Surfer and the Zabu uh, nerfs go into effect. Maybe these Modoc builds will be more competitive. Also, after a week of playing, we might have a better idea of what works and what doesn't work. Now, for me, this was the best build that I played. I very much liked the synergies here with this. Morbius gets ramped up with all the discards. I had Morbius is just going through the roof, especially when uh, Modoc finally drops. Swarm interacts insanely nicely with Colleen Wing. If you're able to turn to Colleen Wing and have two swarms and then drop Lockjaw on turn three and then both swarms on top of that cycling through your deck felt really, really good. Moon Knight 
won me several matches where my opponent had to discard. It also uh, won me a match where the opponent had to discard a card and it made their Devil Dino go down in power. Lady Sif synergizes perfectly with Apocalypse, which wants to be discarded. And when Apocalypse is in hand, Lady Sif discards him and then he goes up by four power. Swordmaster is just great value. Three cost six and then discard, which synergizes, of course, with Morbius. Dracula pairs up with Apocalypse. Hell Cow discarding Swarm and Apocalypse. Amazing. Same thing with Modok. And then on the last turn, hopefully, uh, you play Modok on turn five, discard all of your Swarms, discard all of your Apocalypse, and they ramp up in power. And then you have Dracula on the board. You play Chavez and all the Swarms leave Apocalypse in your hand is the only card which feeds into Dracula. And it is just amazing. The other two deck builds had similar approaches. Uh, this one here just felt clunky. Uh, I tried a couple different versions of it. The best version uh, that worked best for me was the Zabu build, uh, which allowed me to get Wong out a lot easier. Mystique can copy Morbius and or Wong. And then the idea is to play Wong, let's say on turn four and then drop Modok or Hellcow on that lane and then discard Apocalypse and or Swarm over and over and over again. Lots of fun. And then lastly, there was a Hella build. Uh, this, uh, I get it. I, I mean, basically there's a three card combo. If you have Invisible Woman, Modok and Hella in your hand, just do nothing and play Invisible Woman and then play Modok and then play Hella. Uh, for for me, I found this to be a little bit frustrating and maybe I, I, I need to take some time and optimize the build or play it more. And it did win, but it, it seems super inconsistent. And the thing that was the most annoying thing to me, frankly, was that let's say I get the combo off Invisible Woman, Modok, and then Hella, and Hella pops off and the cards, they repopulate into random locations and you still lose, feels bad. So let me know if you want me to make a video about uh, the Lockjaw deck. That was the one that I liked the most. I, I, I'm not using it to climb. Uh, I've been climbing, I think I'm already at 78 or 79 on my ranks and I've been climbing with you know the usual suspects, Suri, or, or Zabu is what I've been using. Let me know what you think. Uh, hopefully this is gonna be our featured location for tonight. And now it's time for the giveaway. I really hope you liked today's video because if you did, you are in luck. For every single person that likes this video, you will be getting for free a eight star Arnold Pixel variant. This is not a scam. He's the best. He helped me test out so much today and I had a blast uh, playing with him. All right, let me know what you think in the comments section. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming. Bye for now.